Hello everyone, this is Dr. Man Wai Li from Ipo Malaysia. Today's video, I'm going to share some tips on Yamane intrascleral haptic fixation. This is a video of a patient that was referred to me with a subluxated one-piece intraocular lens. The cartoon here highlights where the lens appears to be sitting and it also seems to be flipped. So the plan is to explant this one-piece lens and intrasclerally fixate a three-piece intraocular lens. So my first tip is to use an AC maintainer. The paracentesis here is created with a one millimeter side port knife at about the seven o'clock position and putting in an AC maintainer here to maintain a pressurized globe. The paracentesis placements are always important and sitting superiorly, which is my preferred position, I tend to put them at about 10 and two o'clock. In the tight Asian palpebral fissures, I find that the nasal and temporal areas around allow me more space to pass my needles rather than when I sit temporally. They can be quite tight sometimes. So as you see here, I use 25 gauge end grasping forceps to grab onto the intraocular lens. As you see, the haptics are flipped. So having done a pass planar anterior vitrectomy with triamcinolone, I'm explanting the lens now. And I have not really cut the lens in two because I've ex extended the wound to a three millimeter incision and subsequently you see that the lens does come out in one piece. Now the first thing is to check if your haptics fit. So with a thin wall 30 gauge needles, what you want to do is to take the intraocular lens, in this case it's an Elcon ma 60 ac with PMA haptics and make sure they fit into the needle before you start. Now I prefer to mark the needle and that's the next tip. So you can use two to three millimeters um, to actually determine the length of your intrascleral tunnel and I prefer to mark the needle so that I don't have to use too many markings on the conch to guide my needle positioning. So just a little small mark to indicate. The needle is bent about two millimeters from the hub and about 70 degrees. So my next tip is on bending the needle as I mentioned. 70 degrees should create a good position for your hands to actually enter the eye ergonomically. Some people like to use the needle attached to a syringe. I prefer to just hold the needle hub. Now marking your entry points are very important. I tend to go two millimeters posterior to the limbus. I have the benefit of using a variant image guided system, which allows me to mark exactly 180 degrees apart. There are many markers available you can do manually, either with a Mendes marker or something very nicely designed by Ashwin Agarwal. The Ashwin Agarwal marker does that well as, as well. I've put in the intraocular lens into the anterior chamber here. Now entering the eye, I will go relatively flat to the surface of the eye, angle slightly parallel to the limbus, go in to I'll see the marking on my needle and then dive down towards the optic nerve. So using a 25 gauge forceps, grabbing hold to the haptic near the tip so that you can have good control and then pass it into the needle. They should pass in quite easily. Now how much do you bring in? I normally go in about 40 to 50% of the haptic. Coming from the other side, same principle, go in quite flat to the surface of the eye, relatively par parallel to the limbus and do the same. Now the trailing haptic is more tricky to actually dock on the needle and what I find useful is to actually use the needle to push on the optic to present the haptic into a good position so that you can grab it and then dock it on the needle and it allows you time to re-grasp and feed the needle in gradually. I don't usually pull the haptics out at the same time, I know that's the traditional or the conventional method that's been described, I tend to pull it out one at a time ensuring that I can grab onto the aptic so I don't pull the other end back in. Now as you use your handheld cautery to create the little flanges, you don't need a big one, you don't touch the tip, you just bring, have it hot enough to bring close to the tip and you get a little small nub as you see here. Using a 30 gauge needle you don't really need a big flange and this allows it to be actually pushed back into the scleral tunnel very nicely. And you want to adjust the haptic slowly. So push a little bit at a time, keeping your eye on the centration and whether there's any significant tilt. 
because any of that can still be adjusted if it's not too significant small decentration or small tilt you can actually cut the haptics and adjust so when you see that the centration is good I will then push the ends of those haptic the flanges back into the scleral tunnel to ensure that they are flush so my last tip here is to always do a peripheral iridectomy use the cutter here with a low setting and do at least one PI and in some cases where you have a lot of iridodonesis I would recommend doing two PIs even and this is the case completed. Thank you very much for your attention.